Compression is a crucial part of your vocal mix, but it doesn't have to be complicated. A lot of people make it seem way too confusing, way too complicated. It doesn't have to be. In today's video, we're gonna look at two approaches to vocal compression that are emulated after some of the most famous vocal compressors in the world, just using this stock Logic compressor. It's amazing what you can do with this thing. So let's go and jump into Logic and take a look at this. Now, if you're not familiar with compression, the concept of compression, at least as we're gonna be using it for vocals, is that we're gonna contain the louder words, compress the louder words, and then use makeup gain to bring them back up to their original volume and then the quieter words won't get compressed so they will just benefit from that makeup gain and get brought up in volume and now the difference between the loudest words and the quieter words is much smaller for example this word right here is a lot louder than this little word right here so i want to get those a little closer together so that nothing is ever too loud and nothing is ever too quiet and gets lost in the mix now that's the technical reason that we do it but in terms of the feel of the vocal what this really does is make the vocal feel really upfront really really present for the listener. So it's very crucial, even if you are just lightly containing the dynamics, the act of compression just helps bring that vocal forward. So you're gonna wanna do this on most, if not all vocal mixes. And the first approach is definitely my main approach. So you'll find the compressor under dynamics, compressor, the first type that we're gonna be looking at is an 1176 style compression. This is an incredibly fast compressor and it works really well on most vocals. The only vocals I don't do this on are really soft vocals that just need very gentle compression. This is a bit of an aggressive compression, but it works in a lot of different genres from rock to pop to rap. I would say I end up with this compressor for about 90% of my vocals. So you have two options in terms of the emulation up here. You have Studio Fet or Vintage Fet. They're both 1176 style, but the Studio Fet is the one that I prefer. It's the one that I grab most of the time. This one's a little bit gentler sounding in my opinion. This one's a little bit more aggressive. And then the main settings that we would need to tweak is always turn off auto gain. That's the number one thing I do. For this style compression, we wanna turn off the auto release function as well. And then we wanna set our ratio to four to one. That's the lowest setting of a ratio on a 1176 style compressor. The cool thing is you can cheat this. If you wanna go lighter, less aggressive, you can, so you could turn your ratio down. If you want a more aggressive vocal that really cuts through, you could go a little bit more aggressive as well. But four to one is a good starting point and works on most vocals in my experience. And then the attack time. So an 1176, the slowest attack time is about 0.9 milliseconds. So I like to set my attack time to one millisecond. I find that the slowest setting on 1176 works really well for vocals to still have a little bit of punch. The words cut through a little bit. They get this kind of spittiness that really helps them sit in the mix. Uh, yeah, and 0.1 milliseconds is pretty good. And then your release time around 50 milliseconds. So that is the standard setting for an 1176. Now, another little thing that we can do to get more of that 1176 style sound is to turn on the soft distortion. This is basically just a little bit of saturation that's emulating the analog saturation that you would get if you were running through an analog piece of hardware. So a little bit of this is really nice. So I find soft works pretty well on vocals. There's some vocals this doesn't sound good on. So if you turn it on and you realize you don't like the sound of it, maybe try turning it back off. But I find that most vocals benefit and sound pretty good with this soft distortion on. Okay, so that is the initial settings. Now all we have to do is focus on our threshold here, dialing this in so I'm catching the loudest words, but not really the quietest words and then using the makeup gain to balance the output volume so it's the same volume when the compressor's off and on so I can assess whether or not I like the sound of this compression. Now real quick, instead of writing that all down, I put all of these settings in a guide that you can download below. It's my Pro Vocal checklist. It goes through all these settings as well as everything else we're covering in this Pro Vocal mixing series. So be sure to pick it up for free from link in the description below. And if you're finding this video helpful and you think it'd be helpful to someone else, could you be sure to like the video to make sure more people see it? I just wanna make sure that this video helps as many people as possible. Okay, let's go ahead and, and listen to it here. Every time say that we both agree that we've got an understanding set that look when you leave. So what I'm looking for is that on the quietest words, or at least the quietest parts of the words, so at the tail end of a word, for example, we're getting little to no compression. So let's let it play through a little bit more and you can kind of see what's happening on the waveform right here and notice what's happening on the meter. Try to watch how it, they're interacting with the meter. So for weeks we can be so discreet Until your life gets too demanding Now we're breaking I think we have a little bit more compression. 
So I used to be really worried about the amount of compression not going over four or five decibels. A lot of people would really sell you on that. In my experience, it matters a little less. It's okay if it kind of gets extreme. And in some cases you want it to be extreme. So you could be having it hit, you know, 20 decibels on here, really aggressive compression. If we listen to an example of that, if we set this really aggressively and listen to it in solo. So for weeks we can be so discreet. It brings a little bit more of the room noise, uh, but it gives you this very pumping sound to the vocal. That's a cool effect, especially with rock music. With this vocal, I think it's not the right effect for us. So we're just going to aim for something a little more subtle here. So for weeks we can be so discreet Until your life gets too demanding Now we're breaking the heat so you see on heat, it barely pops up. We're hitting maybe one decibel. And at the tail end and start of some of the words, we're getting little to no compression. That's what we're looking for on this meter. So for weeks, we can be so discreet until your life And then we're just going to use makeup demanding. game now we're breaking to bring the, the volume back up. Now, you have to use your ears a little bit for this. If you're consistently hitting five decibels, then you're probably going to be do, doing something like three to four decibels of makeup gain. So let's go and listen to this off and on and see if it sounds like it's the same volume off and on. So off. So for weeks we can be on. so discreet until your life gets too So we're getting a little extra volume. And part of that is definitely the soft distortion. I find that adds about two decibels of of uh, output as well. So I always turn my output gain over here down two decibels to compensate for that. Okay, so now let's listen to this off and on. So for weeks off. we can be so discreet on. until your life gets too demanding. Now we're breaking the heat. That feels about the same volume to me, but at times if you look at the input meter and the output meter, you'll see that we're actually often getting a little less volume on the output, but it feels more up front now. Okay, let's listen to this in the context of the song. So for we can be so discreet until your life gets too demanding. Now we're breaking the key. So, this is a great example right here. She starts this phrase fairly loud, gets a little bit quieter, and then gets a little bit louder again. All of this quieter section right here is going to get brought up by three decibels because it's barely getting compressed if compressed at all. Whereas the louder section is getting compressed, you know, five, six decibels. So that's getting turned down a little bit, quieter section brought up, and then they're sitting a little bit more even. So you'll notice when this is off, when she gets to this phrase right here, it's getting a little bit lost. When I turn this on, listen to that same phrase. Now, I might also do a little bit of automation after the fact to bring it up a little bit extra, but in general, now that phrase is sitting much more consistently. I might not end up having to automate it at all. I always wait to do any automation until the final step just to really hear how it's all sounding once it's all together. But this is the first approach. So a quick overview. This is 1176 style compression. It's a little bit more aggressive. It's much, much faster. The way you set this up is the studio FET or the vintage FET, auto gain off, auto release off your release around 50 milliseconds, your attack time around one millisecond, your ratio around four to one. You can go lighter if you want it to sound a little less aggressive. You can go higher if you want it to be more aggressive. And then you just dial in your threshold and your makeup gain to get the amount of compression that you want where it's compressing on louder words and not necessarily on quieter words or very little on quieter words. And then makeup gain so that you're not losing any volume. And then a little bit of soft distortion if it works on the vocal, I find it often does. And then your output gain down negative two just to offset the added gain from that distortion. Okay, so that's 1176 style compression. It's great on a lot of vocals. I think it sounds great on this vocal in this song. But let's jump over to another song that's a little bit lighter, and we're gonna look at LA-2A optical style compression. Okay, so this song, the vocals are a little bit lighter, so they really call for a lighter compression. And in this case, we're using an optical style compression, an LA-2A style compressor, uh, which basically means that it's going to react a little bit differently depending on how hard the vocals hit it. Now, we can't perfectly emulate that with the stock logic compressor, but we get pretty close. So the settings for this are the vintage opto setting, 
We set an attack time of around 10 milliseconds. We use the auto release function here, so it kind of changes depending on how it's compressing, how hard it's compressing. We have auto gain off always. And then we are using a lighter two to one-ish ratio. That's my go-to for this type of compression. And then we're just setting our threshold to get a little bit of compression. It's the same basic threshold and makeup gain scenario. I'm still using the soft distortion here and then a little bit of the output gain being turned down to balance that out. And this is what it sounds like on this vocal here. Looking for another crisis. Looking for a comfortable rate. If we go to that phrase right there, if I turn this compressor off. Looking for a comfortable rage. That comfortable is a little bit loud, but the looking for is a little bit quiet. The rage, you really hear tail off at the end. When we have this compression on, you hear that rage. We hear every little breath and every little sound to his vocal right at the end of that tail. Looking for a comfortable rage. Right, much, much better. And then as we get into these louder phrases here, from this life with, it'll compress a little bit harder. You thought would have been better by your age. And you really hear that age trail off because it's not getting compressed at all. So then this makeup gain is adding to the volume of that quieter part. Okay, so that's vocal compression in a nutshell. Again, it doesn't have to be complicated. These two approaches are my go-to on just about every single vocal. The 1176, probably a little bit more. This Opto, a little bit less, but just because of the type of music that I'm mixing. If you're only ever working on lighter music, this Opto might be the approach for you. But don't be afraid of trying that 1176 style and seeing if you like the sound of it on vocals. Sometimes that really fast compression can be more transparent on a vocal. So maybe try it out as well. Last note about compression is that you can stack these compressors. You can do the 1176 into the Opto. That's very, very common. Some people go the opposite. They go Opto into an 1176. Both approaches are common. And by stacking, each compressor can do a little less work. They can each bring their own sonic characteristics. So another thing that you can try out. But in most cases, personally, I find that one compressor set appropriately does the trick for me. And I only stack if I just really need to contain it a little bit extra. And I'm really just targeting specific areas. You can also just go in and use the clip gain to turn down little regions as well. I'll link to a video above here where I talk about how to use your clip gain for that purpose. Now, if you don't already have it, be sure to grab that Pro Vocal Checklist completely free from the link in the description below. It has all the 1176 style settings labeled right on it, so you could quickly use that next time you're setting up your vocal compression so you don't have to come back to this video series. That's my main compressor, so that's the one I'd always start with. Before you go, I'd love to hear from you. Has this made vocal compression feel a little less intimidating? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time.